Okay, at this lab station today, we're going to talk about mastitis testing, what is mastitis testing, and how can we help prevent this disease from occurring in dairy cattle. So at the end of this laboratory station, there's a few things that you should know. The first one is you should be able to define mastitis and explain why it's such a significant disease to the U.S. dairy industry. You also should be able to compare and contrast the different types of mastitis, such as clinical and subclinical. We're going to cover some of the risk factors that make an animal more likely to come down with mastitis, and again, ways that we can prevent mastitis from even occurring. We'll then describe how somatic cell counts and the CMT test can be used to diagnose cows that we suspect have mastitis. So mastitis is a word that simply means inflammation of the mammary gland. So anytime we see inflammation of an animal's mammary gland, not just a dairy cow, but any mammal, we call this mastitis. Now in the dairy industry, mastitis has been and still remains a prevalent disease um, within our industry. And most oftentimes when an animal is diagnosed with mastitis, a major cause of this diagnosis is gonna be because of bacteria. So why do we care so much within our industry about uh, mastitis because mastitis is not only going to be a welfare issue for the animal because we want to keep our animals healthy so they continue to produce um, milk but we also have an economic concern that comes with mastitis so economic losses due to mastitis include loss of milk production because this milk is no longer able to be sold for human consumption we see treatment costs such as antibiotics and veterinary expenses that come with the treatment of mastitis and animals that have consistently come down with mastitis are oftentimes cold from the herd there's also a list, a number of other expenses that we can see that will result from the use um, or increase in mastitis in our herd. The estimated annual cost of the U.S. dairy industry is between $1.7 and $2 billion every single year, which is a huge, huge amount of money that the industry continues to spend to try to reduce and prevent and treat cows that have mastitis. The primary cause of mastitis in any mammal is the ability of the bacteria to invade the, ma the mammary gland and also develop and establish an infection. So we can see here from these three pictures that first the bacteria must be able to gain entrance through the teat canal. This oftentimes happens after an animal returns back from the milking parlor. When the teat end is dilated, she lays down and if she's exposed to bacteria, the bacteria are then able to enter into that teat canal. Once the bacteria are in the teat canal and they've had access to the mammary gland, they must be able to colonize the mammary gland when they do this by attaching to secretory cells that are the milk producing cells within the gland. When this occurs, there's an automatic immune response by the dairy cow, and this is when we begin to see the inflammation or the characteristic signs of inflammation. So an increase in mastitis or inflammation typically ends up in an increase in what we call somatic cells within the milk. So somatic cells or white blood cells are predominantly leukocytes or the right white blood cells that occur as a result of the response of the dairy cow's immune system to the bacteria that has colonized her mammary gland. The somatic cell count is the terminology that we use to diagnose mastitis in the dairy industry. The somatic cell count or SCC refers to the number of cells per mill of milk. And we can look at this measurement either looking at individual bulk tanks um, or the bulk tank that accompanies each farm where the milks, the cow's milk will go, or we can look at the individual cow. So oftentimes you'll hear a producer give their overall bulk tank somatic cell count, but also the particular somatic cell count of one or two animals that they think have mastitis. Now an individual cow at any one time that does not have mastitis, we would expect that her somatic cell count of her milk from each of the four quarters would be less than 200,000 cells per mil. When an individual quarter rises above 200,000 cells per mil, that's when we consider that that particular quarter is infected. A dairy cow has four quarters and at any one time she can have one, two, three, four, or no quarters infected with mastitis. Mastitis can be characterized into two types, either clinical or subclinical. Clinical mastitis are those animals that have mastitis that you can actually visibly see the abnormalities of their udder. So these may be the animals that their udder, it feels hot to the touch. We're able to actually see visible changes in the milk production from those quarters that are infected. And we'll oftentimes see a redness or swollen area um, in that particular quarter. Now clinical mastitis accounts for approximately 20% of all cases of mastitis that we see in the dairy industry. 
we're most concerned about trying to prevent subclinical cases of mastitis because animals that have subclinical cases are animals that we're not able to see that they have an actual infection occurring. So they don't show signs like swollen udders, um, abnormalities in their milk. And unfortunately, this is 80% of the cases that we see um, on our dairy farm. So we don't know they have infection and that there's one present, um, but there is in fact one and they will be putting these somatic cell count into the bulk tank. There are a number of risk factors that can lead to a dairy cow contracting the bacteria that might result in mastitis. The first one's gonna be stress. So at different times of the animal's reproductive life, she's gonna undergo more stress than others. So dairy cows are especially susceptible to mastitis infections right after calving. We know that during this time, their immune system, the factors that work with the immune system are, are repressed or decline. So this makes the animal more likely to come down uh, with mastitis if she is exposed to the bacteria. We also look at the environment. An environment that's full of manure um, or other dirt can oftentimes lead to harboring a bacteria, which if exposed to the end of the dairy cow's teat, gives another opportunity for infection to occur. We not only look at the environment that the animal lives in, but we all look at poor milking hygiene. So how you're milking and what technique you're using to milk is incredibly important to try to reduce the incidences and the cases of mastitis that can occur from cow to cow uh, in the milking parlor. One way that we can detect mastitis in an individual cow is through the California mastitis test. This paddle that you see here in the picture, there's four paddles, each of the, or four quarters, each of those quarters uh, within the paddle represent, which you can use for a quarter of one of the cows. The California mastitis test is a cow side test. So we don't typically use this with a bulk tank, but we'll use this with an individual cow to diagnose mastitis in one of her quarters. So how does a producer actually do the CMT test? So they'll take the paddle and they'll go to the cow that they think may be infected or one they want to determine if they have mastitis. They'll use a particular iodine concentrate that they're then able to combine with a milk sample that they put in each of these each of these four quarters that you see here within the paddle they swirl a motion so they can mix the solution with the milk and if there is mastitis mastitis or high levels of somatic cells that are present we'll start to see clumping or aggregates forming within each of those four paddles so as you can see here some of these paddles or some of these samples here we can see that there's evidence of mastitis occurring with a high somatic cell count and other other ones we don't see any reaction in. So after you run the test, although the test is a qualitative test that's based just on looking at the results when we're mixing the solution with the milk sample from each quarter, we're then able to try to quantify those numbers based on the visual observations that we see with the test. So Dr. Pamela Rug at the University of Wisconsin-Madison put this chart together that you see here. It has a somatic cell score, which is N is negative, trace, and then we see a one, two, and three, and they has a corresponding somatic cell range. So if you're taking samples of your cow, you would look and you would see to what degree do you see some of those signs of mastitis occurring within the milk. So do you see more clumpiness occurring uh, when you add the two solutions together? And once you make those visual observations, so let's say that you just ran a sample and it's a score of two, then we would know that particular udder has 1.2 million to 5 million average somatic cell range. And this would indicate that the animal has a serious mastitis infection. So the CMT provides us with a very easy chance um, when we're on the farm to be able to evaluate individual cows in a quick manner. And then if we identify that cow, we're then able to go on to the next step of determining what's causing that particular mastitis infection. So now that we've learned a little bit about what mastitis is and how to treat mastitis, we really need to talk about the prevention of mastitis because if we can prevent the disease from ever occurring, we don't have to get to the point where we have to treat the disease. So some of the things we can do from a management standpoint to help reduce incidences of, of this disease is to really make sure that we have a clean environment that the animal's living in. Keep our bedding and our stalls as clean as possible. Make sure there's no standing water on the farm um, that those animals may be exposed to. We also really need to pay attention to proper milking procedures. We know a lot of pathogens are transmitted in the milking parlor if protocols aren't followed exactly. So it's important that anybody in the milking parlor knows what the standard operating procedures are and takes the time to make sure that they're following those. 
Finally, we mentioned earlier on in this presentation that cows right after calving are very likely to come down with mastitis if there's bacteria present um, in their surroundings. But we also know the second most prevalent time that the animal will get mastitis is during dry off. So when she goes from lactating to, dry, to drying off right during her dry period before she'll have her calf. So during this time, we see an increase in incidences of mastitis. So we can do dry cow treatment which you can see here in the picture, somebody's injecting the antibiotic into the udder, and this will help prevent the mastitis infection from occurring if she's going to, if she's more predisposed to getting it during this time period. So in summary, in this lab station, we learned about mastitis and that it's inflammation of the udder that's normally caused by some type of bacterial invasion through the teat canal. Once that invasion occurs, the bacteria has to be able to establish an infection in order for the actual mastitis to happen and inflammation to occur. We can use the California mastitis test or CMT to estimate the somatic cell count and help diagnose clinical and subclinical cows at the individual cow level. We can then look at prevention of mastitis by keeping a clean environment, making sure that we're properly following procedures in the milking parlor, and also treating all cows at dry off.